Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Graham Park here in Ottawa. See you in five, Wayne. In five, you bet. We're here to meet that man, Carl Roth. He is just wild about unicycles. We okay, he wants to play some basketball. <laughs> okay, time now to meet our next guest, Carl Roth. Hello, Carl. Hey, Wayne. He is a man who has decided that one good turn certainly deserves another. Isn't that amazing? He tried a unicycle ten years ago. Back then, he had no way of knowing how many hours he'd spent balanced on just one wheel. What's the sensation when you're tooling along, going down the road? Well, it's, uh, it's very quiet, and uh, you can feel yourself on that balance point where you're just sitting there and you're rolling along and your balance perfect. This unicycle obsession started in 1994 when Carl and his family were living at the Shiloh military base in Manitoba. His eldest son was six years old and ready for a two-wheeler. So we went to get a bicycle for my son Carl, and lo and behold, there was actually this unicycle right here beside me, hanging on his rock by his bicycles, and he had no bicycle suitable for my son, but he had this thing hanging there and had $35 on it, and as soon as I saw it sitting there, it was just, here's your opportunity right now. So Carl, you went it. there though to buy a bike for your son. <laughs> yeah, also, my wife noticed that. Kathy also, <laughs> uh, she noticed that when I got home. So what did he do then? Well, then I had to figure out how do, you, how do you learn this thing. You gotta remember I was in the army as well, so it wasn't the first thing you'd run out to the officer's mess and ask if anybody there could help you learn to ride your unicycle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was pretty funny because I, I, they did have a separate street for all the senior officers, and I was the commanding officer of the signal squadron there, the communication squadron. So when I first started riding it, the first time I broke the edge of the driveway, that's when, you know, the colonels looking out the window could see and the word eccentric was used. <laughs> they could see the Major Roth trying to ride, and not getting too far at that, because it took a while to get to the other driveway, and it was the flailing arms all the way. After learning the basics, Carl didn't ride all that often, but his interest picked up when he and his family moved to Ottawa four years ago. Way to go. That's when his sons caught the unicycle bug. All right. What all they right. helped me with is they gave me a reason to go that little bit extra to remind me, you know, remind me how much fun it was. <laughs> now, between the three unicycle fans in the Roth household, they've got 15 unicycles. These three here are all the freestyle type unicycles. And Carl's caught a bad case of unicycle fever. Hey, why not get off the road and get into the fun? We have mountain unicycles here. We also have the big cruiser, and it's a 36 inch wheel. And this one's called a giraffe. No, you, you spend the time with your son. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> what about Kathy? She watches us, but she's quite happy not to do it. I keep, keep telling her she should secretly learn the unicycle, oh. then one day just come riding out <laughs> and watch my two sons, watch my two sons just keel over. <laughs> you want to add anything else on there? While Kathy is happy to stay on the sidelines, there are a lot of people in the neighborhood who are more keen to give the unicycle a try. And the Roth family driveway has turned into a sort of unicycle training ground. Okay, who wants to play some basketball? To help yeah. keep up yeah. with the demand, Carl started a unicycle club three years ago, and now unicycle fans get together twice a week to ride at the local community center. Nice, Jordy. There's no cost to join in. In fact, there's nothing formal about it. Some riders are already pretty talented, but there are always a few people who are still getting the hang of balancing on a narrow band of rubber, and for those people, Carl always lends a hand. That's it, go, 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 yeah, all right. And they're, they're so happy when they get it, and, you're, and you know they're having fun because they're doing something that is not on the top of the cool list. Carl gives them all a chance to master this slightly oddball skill. Don't fall, don't fall. Yeah, don't do it. He's become a kind of unofficial ambassador for the sport of unicycling. Oh. Well, I'm the go-to guy. I'm not the best rider, but you know, not, it's not about being the best rider. I can put you in touch with the best rider pretty quick. Oh, Thomas, we're short three clubs. Go down, grab three clubs. Yeah. Carl, get the sound yeah. box. Devin, grab yeah. the shirt. And as if running the club wasn't enough, the shirts. Carl has started up a little performance troupe made up of his sons, Carl and Thomas, and their friend Devin. And it's like, this isn't guys in sequence who are 45. This is my 13-year-old son, which means you could do this too. You could learn to juggle, you could unicycle, you could have fun. Although some people still think unicycling's frivolous. 
you know, I don't know. But I guess some people always think that, right? <laughs>